Hi everybody, this is Craig Robertson uh, with UNM IEEE and uh, a lot of people in uh, the symbolic logic and uh, in digital logic classes have a lot of trouble with uh, K-maps. K-maps are a great way to get the simplest function out of just a random min-term and don't care equation like we have here. So, I'm going to show you how to do a K-map today. A lot of people have trouble setting them up. This is going to be a slow and uh, easy tutorial uh, to show you how to do it. You can work your way up to uh, harder problems from here. So, first what we want to do with a K-map is we want to see how many variables we have. Now, this is f of a, b, c, d, so we know that we have a four variable K-map. This is the largest variable k-map that I feel comfortable doing by hand. Uh, after that, it gets a little confusing. You have to go into three dimensions, and uh, it's probably just easier to type um, your code into VHDL and figure it out from there. But let's see if we can do this. So we know it's a four-variable k-map, so we're going to have two to the four squares in here. And we just set up a k-map like this. Now, it may be a little confusing at first, but trust me, this will, uh, this will get very simple for you guys. So let's go ahead and say, this is the function f, so we're going to put f right here. And I like to set my k-maps up in an a, b, c, d configuration. It just, I just think better that way, I think, um, in, in the way that I have to set it up and in the way that I have to number the min terms. So, let's go ahead and call this 0, 0. 0, 1. All I'm doing is counting in binary up this way. But what we have to make sure to observe here is that this is gray code. So 0, 0 is a 0. 0, 1 is a 1. Then we have to go to 1, 1 and 1, 0. And I'll explain this in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on this side. So now that I've numbered it, let's go ahead and look at the min terms. And notice that it's just it's a gray code numbering. A lot of people mess this up. The key map spits out just a bunch of stuff that's absolutely useless to you if you don't number it right. Now the reason we do this is because it's zero 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 one 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 zero. The way that we're going to order this k-map in min terms is we're going to have all these ones and zeros sitting next to each other, and we want to see what they have in common. But we won't know what they do have in common unless we number it like this, because in this way, and this is the way the gray code works, 0, 0, 0, 1, notice that only one bit changed between these two columns. This one right here, right? It went from 0 to 1. Now, in this column, notice that only one bit changes again between these two columns. So it's 0 to a 1, right? The 1 stayed the same. In these two columns, only one thing changes. This one changes from a 1 to a 0. So we've covered all the possibilities for these two digits, but we've done it in a way that only one thing is changing at a time, which makes it able for us to, uh, to isolate what's changing and to simplify these functions in a very rapid fashion. So let's go ahead and, uh, and attack this problem. Um, before actually before we start let me kinda show you guys why a k-map is set up this way so this is a C and these are corresponding to that C and I hope that makes sense to you guys is this this column means when C is 0 the same as what this column means when C is 0 so both these columns C equals 0 for both these columns over here C is going to be equal to 1. And this is uh, just a shorthand way to express how it all works um, and what, how we can rapidly number these and uh, make it work out in a way that we can group them and find the simplest expression. Now D here, for this column, D equals a 0, D equals a 1, D equals a 1, and D equals a 0. So if you see here, we're putting these columns into what C and D equal, uh, either a 1 or a 0, uh, respectively. So, uh, and we're doing the same thing for A and B down here. The left one is A, the right one is B.
So let's go ahead and start numbering these min terms. Now min terms can be a little confusing. So what I want to do is I want to kind of start out and say the binary number 0000, zero, zero, zero equals min term 0, right? So if we look at this, the binary representation, most significant bit right here, most significant bit right here, least significant bit right here, the least significant bit right here, we can say 0000, zero, zero, zero equals min term 0. So similarly, we can go to the uh, column next to it and say 0001 zero, 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 equals the binary number 1. So we can say this is min term 1. Now, some of you may think 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's completely wrong. Don't assume anything when it comes to a K map. So let's look at 0, 0, 1, 1. That gives us the binary number of 3, right? So then we have to go to min term 3 here. This one, 0, 0, 1, 0, equals min term 2. And I recommend setting up your K maps like this at least the first couple times you do it and then you learn the pattern. It's just the binary number. So this column here, 0, 1, 0, 0. So the binary number 0, 1, 0, 0 is equal to 4. So this is min term 4. Then right here, let's go ahead and do this one down here, just kind of jump around. This is 1, 1, 0, 0. So 1, 1, 0, 0 is equal to the binary number 8 plus 4 equals 12, right? So this one here would be min term 12. Do you see why it's important to actually go through and figure out what each of your min terms are um, before you start uh, assuming and going, you know, just counting through it? So uh, since I know the pattern, I'm going to fill the rest of these in. But on your on your first couple K maps, just make sure to look at the binary numbers, number them all the right way, and uh, kind of set it up your way. That's why I like to kind of do A, B, C, D on mine. So I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of these in. Uh, make sure that on your first couple, you do it yourself, though. You guys can sort of start to see a pattern here of how it happens. This is an 11. Minterm 13, minterm 14, and minterm 15. Now these will be the same for max terms, uh, the same numbers for max terms. It's just you would be uh, following zeros at that point instead of minterms, in which case we're following ones. So this function right here tells us that the sum of minterms is these numbers. So we have minterm 1, we're just going to put a 1 in there. We have min term 2. We're going to put a 1 in min term 2. We have min term 3. We're going to put a 1 in min term 3. Then we have min term 4. We're going to put a 1 in min term 4. Min term 13. We're going to put a 1 in min term 13. And then min term 15. We're going to put a 1 in there. Then over here, notice the D here. These are don't cares. So we can group them if we want to, we can uh, leave them alone if we want to, we just don't care about them. It's, uh, they're there for our convenience, really. So we can say that this is a don't care. This one right here is a don't care. 12, where's 12 at? This is a don't care. And then 14, this is a don't care. So we have all, one, we have all of our ones in there, we have all of our don't cares in there. Then, uh, well, the only choice for the rest of them, right, is zeros. So, we'll go ahead and fill all the rest of the bits in with zero. So, it's, uh, now we have a full K map. Now it's time to group. And what I want to do is I want to show you how to find sum of products, for which is uh, abbreviated SOP. And we're going to go ahead and find that for f, our function f. So with sum of products, all we want to do is we want to group the ones, which is pretty easily done. Uh, the only trick to this is you have to group it in uh, quantities of 2 to the n. So make sure that you always group in quantities of 2 to the n. So 
Let's go ahead and group these four because the, the don't cares don't matter. We can group them if we want to. We can group them if we don't. Notice how I can group four there because two to the two is four. So that's acceptable to group them like that. Now, uh, we don't want to group any of these zeros though. We don't want to get those grouped in. And we only want cells that are adjacent to each other. Um, and we can also wrap, so uh, I'll show you how to um, to do these couples. So if we want to, let's, let's go ahead and group um, these two right here. And then, well, here's a one and a don't care right next to it. We can go ahead and group those two right there. And then we can go ahead and group these two right here. So FSOP is going to be all these. And you see how since we use gray code, we can group them right next to each other, and we always know what's changing, and it's always going to only be one thing changing at a time. So if we have a group of two, then we can eliminate one of these variables. If we have a group of four, then we can eliminate two of these variables. So always go for the biggest group that you can without grouping any zeros. So let's go ahead and start writing this up. I'm going to start with this one right here. So I know that these two have the bits in common, a 0 for A and a 0 for B. So let's go ahead and call that A0, B0, 